Hello. This review will be about the interface of the possibilities of the plugin in terms of controlling the scene. Asset Files. In the Asset Files section, I get through the change of the Active tab in the Project Manager itself. By default, the Explorer tab is open. We can switch to Asset Files tab. At the moment, there is nothing here, but if I open the scene, Then this section will contain information about the textures and the other files associated with the scene. Asset Files is a functionality similar to Asset Tracking, a standard 3D Max utility, but with greater capabilities for working with scene files. On the example of the following scene, I will consider the functionality of this section. When opening another scene, relinking files is always a relevant question. The basic functions of the standard 3D's Max asset tracking are enough to solve this problem, but all this happens in manual mode, with a return to Windows Explorer and so on. Asset Files solves this problem much easier and faster by pressing the Start button. If the textures are located nearby, that is, in the same folder or subfolder as the scene, then there will be no problems for searching and relinking. It is enough to press the Start button. If the situation is complicated by the lack of textures near the scene, then the standard means of Max will not solve it. Through Asset Files, I can find missing files, create additional search paths, and so on. The functionality is similar to the Batch Render and Relink utility discussed in the last review. But the interface of the section is not limited to this. The first thing I want to mention is visual convenience, namely the presence of a review. Which greatly simplifies working with scene files. I will not consider the tabs at the top, since the main file tab is the same as the context menu. The quick access button is to the application which allows you to open the selected file in any Windows application, installed and suitable for this purpose. For textures, the most relevant, as I said earlier, is Photoshop. You can also reassign and select the appropriate software for your purpose. The selected option will be saved in memory. and will continue to open without additional open with settings. Next are the buttons, place material to the material editor. You can open the material in which the selected textures are used, which is also convenient. That is, when you need to understand where what and how, it is always important in somebody's scene. You can open and this texture will be opened along with the material in the matte editor. And accordingly, you can correct this material. Get rid of duplicates, etc. The following option places the selected texture directly in the material editor.
and the option Select Objects allows you to select the object on which the texture is used. Now I will minimize the window. Well, that's obvious. That is any texture. Any. And this applies not only to the texture, this also applies to the IES files. That is, select the option, and all the IES files are highlighted. Select the option, and the object on which this texture is used is highlighted. A very convenient functionality to control what is happening in this scene and with this scene. In the same panel, there are options for displaying previews and sorting files. Sorting by name, folder, size, file type, and display mode. Now let's talk about the context menu that we get by clicking on the selected file. Rename link and rename link in file options. The first option allows you to rename the link while the original texture file remains unchanged. It is complicated to present the situation with this option. Probably, in the process of working on a 3D model's texture, several versions of a single with a serial number are created. Then you can quickly replace the texture by replacing its name. How it works? For example, I will open it now. I create a copy and in Photoshop I will somehow edit it. Let's give it a new serial number. And in order to swap these two textures, simply rename the link. OK, it happened automatically. The following option is even more useful especially for me. Through the Rename Link in File option, I can replace the texture file name with simultaneous relinking by a new name. It is very cool. How it works. Let's select and give it a name. It can be called by the name of the scene. Scene 16, Texture 001, and click the Enter button. The texture was renamed and it was also renamed here. It is very, very convenient. You can rename any file with the problem name. and everything will be relinked and renamed at the hard disk too. Next, the Set Path and Strip Path 
options allow you to manually set the file path or clear the path. Strip path clears the path and leaves only the name. The set path option allows you to assign this path. And looking ahead, the option removes links from scene, which is slightly lower. I would move it closer to the option Set Path and Strip Path because it also works with textures and scene files. That is, those links that we lack in the scene we can delete through Remove Links from Scene. And these links are simply removed from that material if they were in some material or from an object if they were used on an object. No trace of these links remains. Next, the Copy option allows you to copy the file and paste it in another location, both in the Project Manager and in the Windows Explorer. Copy allows you to copy the file to the desired location through the dialog menu. Here I copy a texture file. I go to the Project Manager, Texture section, and let's say I paste it here. Here is a Paste option. Well, respectively, this file appears in the Windows folder. The Copy To option opens a dialog window that allows you to choose the path of saving through Windows Explorer. I talked about View Image already. It shows the file in the viewer. Select Object duplicates the function from the top panel and selects the object with a given texture in the scene. This scene is standard and implemented in the 3D Max Materials Editor, but the presence of everything you need in one window makes using the Asset Files more convenient. The following options are also implemented in 3D Max, but again, God knows where. I am now talking about the options Show Map in Viewport and Disable Map in Viewport. We can disable the demonstration or do it globally. I don't use them often, as I said. Sometimes in cases when the scene is very heavy and I need to free the viewport from textures, thereby freeing up video memory. Remove links from scene. This option removes unnecessary or lost links of the scene and messages about lost links no longer bother you when opening the scene. And the last two options, I have used them already. The first option, Browse in Project Manager Explorer, opens the directory in Project Manager Explorer. If this is a texture, then a tab with textures will open. If this is an IES file, then a section for working with IES files will open. And this file will be shown with additional features that are implemented in this section. And if this is a texture, it will open here and also give the possibility of the additional use of the functional options of this section. View Filter Panel. In this panel, you can see the status of all scene files. Missing found, and with the OK status. If missing and OK are clear, then the status found can be misleading for beginners. 
3D's Max is able to find links in nearby directories, but as a rule, there are files in the same folder with the scene or in a subfolder, which does not always guarantee that these textures will be found during network or distributive rendering because the exact path is not fixed or stored in the scene. The found status can be ignored if the work is being conducted within one local computer. The selection button allows you to filter the display of the textures by the selected object. It is very convenient when you need to understand which textures, materials, or IES files are involved in the object. Let's say we select a chandelier and turn on the selection option. You can immediately see what material is used in the chandelier. Select the chair and it shows which material, or rather what texture is used in the chair, and so on. A very cool thing, I think. Next, the file type option allows you to filter the list by file types. In this scene, we have quite a limited range. There are only IES and texture files. When deactivating the JPEG checkbox, we only have the IES file. It is very, very great. And finally, about the parameters. These parameters are part of the functions of the Batch Render and Relink utility, and I talked about them in the first review. Have fast renderings. Bye.